Hey guys, welcome to the How To Tony channel. Today I'm going to do a tips and tricks video on how to cut circles using just about any tool that you may have in your workshop. And I'm going to show you how to cut circles out of wood, how to cut circles into wood, and also how to cut a circle in a circle. All right, jumping into it, I wanted to show you all the tools that we'll be using. So the first circle we're gonna make is the most basic form, which is just a drill and drill bits that you can get at any hardware store. From there, we'll upgrade to the brad point bits, and I'll explain why you should definitely get a set of these. Uh, moving from there for a bigger hole or a bigger circle, we're gonna go to the paddle bits, also used for your drill. From there, we're gonna go to the hole saw, uh, just to get a bigger hole and a bigger circle. Then we're gonna go to the Forstner bit. I actually don't have one, but I do have a really cool picture of one, and I'll explain why those are advantageous to you. From there, you can make a little bit bigger of a hole with a Dremel or a rotary tool. And I have some little attachments and some other pieces that can make your life a little bit easier or to kind of upgrade your Dremel to give yourself some more capability. From there, I'll even show you how to make a circle using a belt sander. Now I actually don't have a belt sander, but we could pretend. Uh, for some reason I have a sanding belt. Don't know where I got that. But I'll show you how to use a belt sander using my palm sander uh, in its place. From there, we can go to the router. Now the router is extremely versatile, awesome piece of gear, and I'll show you also some little jigs and everything that you can make to make your life a little bit easier and to make some very accurate, perfect circles. From the router, we're gonna take a step back from technology and I'll show you how to make circles using hand tools. From there, I'll show you how to make circles using the band saw. And lastly, I'll show you how to make a circle using the table saw. So I'll show you a bunch of neat jigs to help you out in this process to make your circles a little bit more precise. And the, really the only thing that limits you is your imagination on how capable you think your tools really are. So let's get started. I don't know how I forgot to put this on the table, but I will show you how to make circles using a jigsaw as well. So your standard drill bits will range in size, but a basic kit like this will give you holes or circles from 1 16th of an inch up to half of an inch. Standard drill bits generally aren't bigger than a half an inch, and bigger than that they start to get expensive. But to make holes or circles with them, you just pop them in the drill and drill into the wood. Easy enough. However, sometimes you can't get a straight hole through the wood as you drill, either because you can't line up your bit level to the wood as I'm over exaggerating here, or the bit seems to move as it cuts its way through. A simple L-shaped guide like I made here out of some scraps can help and keep your drill bit on course. Now you could also splurge and get yourself a drill press to solve this issue, but me personally, I'm too broke and I can't afford one. Another common problem you may encounter is your drill bit wandering before it even starts cutting into the wood. One way to help this is before you drill, you use a scratch awl or a center punch and you make a small divot into the wood to give your drill bit's head a place to rest before it starts cutting. Something else you can do, particularly with larger drill bits, is to start your hole or your circle with a small bit first then drill with the larger bit using the small hole as a guide. This also helps prevent the wood from splitting because if you were to just start drilling with a large bit, it removes a lot of material so the wood may be prone to split. Something else that may affect your drill bit from cutting straight through your wood or wandering is the type of wood you're using. Some wood, depending on where it's grown, tends to have larger gaps between the growth rings. These rings may catch your drill bit as it's going through and try to force it in another direction. This is particularly common in softwoods like pine, where the growth rings may be spaced out. Generally, hardwoods are more predictable, but they are also more expensive and take a lot more work to cut through, so they abuse your tools. Just something to be mindful of. Moving on to brad point bits. Because I'm cheap, it actually took me a while before I bought myself a set of brad point bits. Mind you, they really aren't that much more expensive than a standard set of drill bits. I think you can even get a cheaper set at Home Depot right now for about $15. Regardless, they are absolutely worth it. 
do it, and get some. The advantage they provide is this little tip at the head of each one of the bits. This helps give a starter hole for the bit itself and helps keep the bit on track as it cuts its way through. Now at some point, you're gonna wanna make a hole or circle larger than a half an inch. The cheapest option is to upgrade to a set of paddle bits. These are typically used for construction, so they don't make the cleanest holes in your wood. However, if you practice and you cut with patience, you can get some very usable, good looking holes. But they really only go up to about one inch in diameter. Past those, you can get a hole saw, which range anywhere from one inch all the way up to six inches, and sometimes larger. Here I'm using a two and a half inch bit. Now these are a little more expensive, but it is nice to have something where you can make repeated cuts at the same diameter over and over again without having to reset up your tool, your router, whatever you're using. When cutting with the hole saw, you may need to start at a little angle to get the teeth to start cutting into the wood. If all the teeth bite on the wood at the same time, it may catch and kick back on you. Unless your drill is powerful enough, then you could probably just go straight through the wood. After cutting the circle out with your hole saw, you actually get a perfect little circle inside the hole saw itself. To remove it, the easiest way I have found is to shove a screw into the side and to pull it out slowly as you reverse the drill. Forstner bits look very similar to hole saws, however they also have a blade in the middle to help chip away wood in the center. The biggest advantage they offer is you can get a flat bottom hole without cutting all the way through your workpiece. This is good for dowel joinery or mortise and tenon joints. So I don't have any Forstner bits and I actually only have this one hole saw because I have three rules when it comes to buying tools. Number one, don't buy a tool until you need it twice. Number two, don't spend all your money on fancy expensive tools. Spend all your money on materials like exotic woods or car parts, whatever your hobby is. And number three, only when you break or completely outgrow your cheap tools, then you can upgrade. All right, let's move past the drill and make circles with other tools. The belt sander circle is actually very simple. Just mark out a circle on a piece of wood and sand away until the circle takes shape. It's even easier to make the circle when you have movie magic. A jigsaw is an extremely versatile tool. This should probably be one of the first tools you get to cut circles, shapes, and curves. Also, they are relatively cheap for a handheld power tool. This one I got for under $50. To cut a circle, mark one out on a piece of wood and make a starter hole so you can fit the blade in. Putting the starter hole on the inside or the outside of your circle will determine whether you're cutting the circle out of the wood or into the wood. Then just start trimming out your circle. You can also make yourself a jig called a trammel for your jigsaw. A trammel will give you a more precise shape and take your woodworking skills to the next level. I'll show you more about a trammel later. A dremel or rotary tool can cut out a circle in about a million different ways. There's an endless amount of attachments for a dremel from sanding disc, flap disc, metal cutting wheels, drill bits, even little polishing wheels. For this example, let's say you have a piece of wood and you want to fit this piece of PVC pipe inside it. Why? Eh, because you're making a YouTube video and you want to show off how useful a Dremel is. Start by making a hole with a drill bit. Then the Dremel can carve the wood out to size we need so we can fit our pipe into the circle. Dremel attachments can even make the tool a little mini router. You can attach this guide to follow the edge of a board if you want to cut a groove out in the middle of the piece. Its only limitation is the power of its motor and the size bit it can actually take. As you can see here, there's quite a difference in the router and the Dremel bits. And this is actually a smaller router bit. Now it's time for the router. In my opinion, this is probably the best tool for making circles. Its versatility allows you to cut out very small holes like a drill bit and it can go all the way up to very large round tables, say if you have royal company that needs a place at the dinner table. Here you can see my router table. It's nothing fancy, literally just a large piece of plywood with a hole cut out in the center. I made this really quick when I was in the middle of a project and you'd be surprised how useful this is. There's no reason to make jigs overcomplicated. Quick tip, if you need to find the center of a board, 
just mark diagonally from both ends and the center is where your lines intersect. Here I'm marking out a circle with my compass from grade school to ensure when I cut, my jig follows along the line. To get my circle started, I plunged the router bit a little bit away from the mark I made so that I stayed within the lines of my circle. Then I nudged the board toward my mark and set my screw so the board would spin in a circle as I cut. Now as you can see here, you really have a lot more control with the router, especially in this table setup, which leads to these very satisfying, perfect circles. You can also cut a circle out of wood using the same technique. Just place your square board on the router table and put a screw or nail in the center. Then cut your circle to the diameter that you want. Here's another satisfying circle. Now not every circle for a project can be cut out using the router table. In those cases you need to make a router trammel. Here was a rough one that I made which got the job done. Since then, I have improved upon it and made this trammel. As you can see, I can insert a screw or nail at whatever distance and make a bigger or smaller circle. Now you can also make a trammel for your jigsaw as well. I made mine cheap, so it kind of broke apart, but you get the idea. A bandsaw can cut circles, shapes, sharp curves, and even fine details. When cutting a circle freehand, I like to take off major sections of wood first and then nibble away until I get as close as possible to the finished circle itself. Another technique is to keep your focus on the center of the circle you're cutting out or by placing your thumb on the center as you rotate. The biggest disadvantage of the bandsaw is you can't cut a circle into wood without making an entry cut. But if that doesn't bother you or you can hide that entry cut in the project you're building, then have at it. Now I also made this circle jig for the bandsaw. Again, this was a quick jig build, but I made it with the intent to cut a circle without having a hole in the middle from a nail or a screw. Basically, it's just a dowel that I glued into wood at the distance equal to the size circle that I want. Then you attach the board you're cutting with double-sided tape to a piece that rotates on that dowel. I also added a strip of wood on the underside of this jig so that it would ride in the groove of my bandsaw table. However, you could just clamp it in place. Cutting a circle out on the table saw is actually not a whole lot different from using your bandsaw, your router, or your other tools. Really, you just have to line up a board to your blade, and then you drive a screw or nail into the center of your workpiece just like the other methods. You could also use the no-hole bandsaw style jig that I showed earlier. Now, in case you have the same problem I encountered, for my cheap table saw, I had to cut in a few passes and slowly raise the blade each time I passed over the workpiece until I got the circle and I got the shape that I wanted. But that's it. That's cutting a circle out on the table saw. Guys, I really hope this was helpful and you found something out of all these techniques that you could bring back to your workshop. If there's something you're struggling with or any skills that you're trying to improve on, let me know what you're working on by commenting below or sending me an email. Also, if you like and want to see more of these videos, please subscribe to my channel. And lastly, I've been working on my social media outreach, so you can now follow me on Instagram at HowToTony, where I post more of my day-to-day -day activities. Thanks, guys. Okay, I said I would make a circle out of hand tools, but I actually just don't really have any. Uh, if you couldn't tell, this was actually just a piece of scrap wood with some duct tape that I used as a prop. But to cut with real hand tools like a bow saw or a coping saw, you just cut along the line. There's really nothing special about it. It just takes a lot longer and that's probably why I really never got into hand tools. I'm just impatient. But if you are one of those hand tools only guys, just make sure that everybody knows about it and you post about it often, just like people who do CrossFit. La, 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 la.
Oh man, I'm so in touch with nature right now.